Well, if, if thinking about that, I think the biggest change is the change of the relationship between the engineering, consulting engineer anyway, and uh, his client. Uh, the people that came in were the people who were managing, weren't they? And uh, so you didn't get in contact with your client. And also, uh, as I see now, it's, as I understand, you've got to be in conjunction with other people. Mm. That's mm. been the big change. Mm. It's not, it was a very personal thing. It's not that now, and as I see it, it's a very organised thing. Mm. Well, the biggest impact on me was a fellow named Cyril Hudspeth. Mm -hmm. And uh, he applied for a, a uh, junior draftsman and I applied for it. You've got to remember that I'd just, I'd just been married about two weeks or so. And uh, the, the point was that I had made up my mind that I'd studied in my own time drafting and uh, applied mechanics and I was going to apply for anything and my wife was uh, uh, agreed with me that wherever I could put myself in I would do this and I would accept whatever money there was so I applied for the to the start of my career I've applied for a junior draftsman's wow. job okay I think they're more important than anything at uh, the I always keep saying that the, uh, the war taught me so much. Was a, I'd come through the Depression, and uh, this was a terrible time, and I don't want to go over that. But the uh, point was that the war gave me that, that training, and uh, it, it's full of humanities, and it was full of uh, caring for the other man. Mm. And uh, also I, I, I advanced in my... I became a qualified signaller and therefore I was in charge of, a, of the uh, signalling and infantry battalion. But I went on further and I liked the techniques of the army which was happy but I never ever dropped the idea of being an, an engineer because I I'd got into that be just before the war. But we did have to care for each other and uh, I think you, I, I'm quite sure that engineering uh, depends entirely on humanity. Mm. I think all engineers have to have, have be full of humanity, and you can only get that where you get danger and you get uh, <laughs> and you, you get uh, risks, yes. and you you uh, you also get uh, c courage, mm. and you've got to do this, but you've got to think of the other man. Well, I I always had the feeling for academia, and the uh, I'm. I must say that the Melbourne University were very helpful and I think that engineers should keep close to the university um, and many a time I was just tested by the uh, Dean of the Faculty of Melbourne in, uh, University and uh, he said, you know more about this than me and I said, no I don't, I want your view. Mm. And I was quite laughed at at that time, but I think I was early. Mm. You really got to keep close to your in due to your university. That's where the new ideas come. Mm. And you will have noticed that in, in, the, in the running of the practice, uh, I always made sure that two graduates were put on every year mm. to make sure we kept up to date with the, what was going on. Mm. And I got criticised for that too. Well, there was a lot of things. I think if you wanted, it, just to say one thing would be very hard. Because, you know, there's several good projects that I could talk about. But first and foremost was the fact that we were progressing and that I was able to pr provide uh, employment for so many people and families. That, to me, that's the human side of it. And uh, I thought that the, uh, the great structural work was wonderful. I love that. And the two t tall buildings in, in the Collins Street, which is called Collins Place, mm. was a wonderful thing. Yes. The art centre was a wonderful yes. thing. Mm. And also the uh, first di diversity I made was uh, the uh, Southeastern Purification Plant, which was wonderful. And also, of course, the, you can't get away from the Melbourne Underground Rail Loop. Of course. That yeah. was very, mm. really wonderful. But I enjoyed every part of engineering. Well, I think as far as we are concerned, I suppose that's what you want to know. I think the diversification 
was the single great thing that, that made the uh, practice. And uh, that was, uh, do you want to know how I did that? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. I went, I made sure that when I started on my own that I, I had to borrow the money, by the way, to do it. I went around the world and picked, picked up where I found the, the, uh, the practicing engineers and talked to them. And the only people that didn't take it well were the Fox people. But they thought I was after work when I wasn't. And I, I just think that that was the, well, the first time I went away, I was given the a, 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 an appointment with W.S. Atkins. Oh, yes. yeah. it, it, I, I think the firm still goes. They're still England. going, yeah, W.S. Yeah. Atkins. And I knew yeah. Bill Atkins very well, though I'd never met him before. He was only a short man, but he was full of dynamics. And I was told that I was lucky if I got a half hour with him. And... Uh, Two hours later, <laughs> I left him. But he was very keen to make sure that I diversified. Mm. And I, you know, I might ridicule that idea. And uh, I wasn't thinking of diversification mm. then. Mm. But uh, I said, I can't do this, Mr. Atkins. I said, I'm a structural engineer. He said, what the hell do you think I am? <laughs> he said, I'm a structural engineer. Yes. And he was, he was, he was, he was actually, running big steel works. Now that put the idea into my head. And uh, then I went over, to, I was wanting to look at the freezing ground. I'd, have, I'd frozen some ground for the border works in a temporary way at the, down on the flats. And uh, this worked very well, but I went to the, to the university in uh, Toronto and uh, in Canada, and I, I, I became very friendly with them on freezing. Mm. And so this made me alter, and I did alter. And I, I, I got the opportunity by being selected with Brown and Caldwell, who was a great people in, uh, in San Francisco, uh, to work with me on the southeastern purification plant. Mm. And this was a, a, a great event. And this gave us a diversification. Mm. And it's interesting to notice from that, I became very friendly with Dr. Caldwell. And everyone told me I have a hard job with him because he was a hard man to work with. But we became very firm friends. Mm. And you'll find that Caldwell Coronel Engineers came out of that. Mm. And we did the, the uh, sewage plant at, at uh, Canberra and a lovely sewage plant up at Darwin mm. before we set the firm up. Mm. And uh, I insisted on his name being first because it was sewage treatment mm. and that's what he was very good at. Yes. So Caldwell Coddell Engineers, well, he is, he's not with us now, mm. he's passed on. But uh, that was a real uh, you know, innovation, I thought. We, would, we changed entirely because I, I, then, I told the Border Works who I was working with and they gave us this this job on on a world basis. No, that's right. As a matter of fact, you know, I'm glad you brought that point up because the I was criticised very. In fact, I was brought up before the the Association of Consulting Engineers for misrepresenting myself. But I had nothing to do with the treatment, of the, and I I taught them a lesson. Mm -hmm. I did all the civil works, and I was very interested in the chemical works, but uh, I, I, Brown and Caldwell were doing that mm. and that well, I, I, I was wonderful, but you were quite right. Mm. Everyone thought I was misrepresenting myself by taking the sewage treatment plant. Mm. As a matter of fact, I must say this, that by the our practice really set the world going mm. on all this. Mm. Around really with jobs overseas yes. as well. Yeah. But the first of all, I knew we were going to have a Melbourne Underground uh, loop, and uh, I, I, I spoke to the railway people about it, and they sort of laughed and said that, you know, you're a, a structural man, you wouldn't know anything about tunnels, but I did. Yeah. When I was a student, I helped one of the masters at RMIT, as it was then. I think it was. The Institute of Melbourne Technolo Technological Institute, the Melbourne Technological Institute, 
and he was getting doing an exam and I did his, some of the drawings and I've always been interested in tunnels. I told them this but they rather laughed at it. They said, you know, you didn't have enough experience. So that meant that I had to get, if I was going to do the underground, I would have to get somehow some lessons in uh, tunnelling. So I went around the world, it's not much good at getting on the phone or even writing to people, you've got to see you. So I went straight away to see uh, Motte and Anderson. I knew they were doing all the building work, all the uh, tunnelling work, I should say, in uh, London. And uh, they did agree that uh, they, if they think about it, to work with me. And uh, then I went over to, uh, they said there's another firm in, uh, in Canada, uh, Hatch. And uh, they'd, they'd worked with Hatch on the Young, the young Street Underground in Toronto. And uh, we went, got in the plane straight away and I went over and they decided they'd, they'd work with us too if, if this years come about. And then I, I knew that we needed somebody like uh, Don Jacobs, who was a temporary man in tunnels. And uh, I saw him and yes, he would work. But I had, that was, I, I was five years going round these people and getting to know them and then getting to know me was much important. It's very interesting, that system, because of all those people, I'm still friendly with those who are still alive. Wow. wow. <laughs> we had a wonderful time. But we, we, you, you might say that, that I also went, made sure that I knew how to work with, with railway people because I went to London and when I was there several times, I went to see the top engineer in the London Underground yeah. and... Uh, he, he taught me so many things. I think we, we, we won the Melbourne Underground in worldwide competition. Yes. But I think the real, well, the real thing was I knew, and I'd, I'd done it before, that I'd been interested in tunnels through mountains, and we had this snowy mountain view, but it's different going through tunnels than, than going through mountains than it is going through, through a city. Yes. And we had nobody to do that. So I, that's why I went to Motai, Motai and Anderson. <laughs> this was really remarkable. And, but the thing was, it was me who insisted upon having Jacobs with us. And I think that won us the, the commission, if you, want, if you want my view, because he was skilled in temporary work. All over the world, he was a skilled temporary tunnel man. And he, he did all the temporary works the tunnels in the Melbourne Loop, working with other people yeah. and being with other engineers. Yeah. I think that the, the thing that engineering is, that no matter what you do, you can't live long enough to, be, to know all you can about engineering. That was what I had to do. Mm. And I, I'm, I'm to, to this very day, I'm still an engineer. Yeah. Yeah. And I was a soldier too, and I was an engineer.